has a with all the major broadcasters, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to be right in the door of the broadcasters. Um, so uh, we did it over. We lost the money, like 100 Gs at least, and we paid everybody to do it again. Um, and then we sent it into the director, director loved it, producer loved it, and then it was like, the owner basically called and said, I don't like it, do it again. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Right? But I signed a contract because I was, in a, I was in a rush to get the, get the first payment because I had a big studio and a whole bunch of people. I need a constant stream of money to keep all these things going. So I rush into deals. Right? And that's kind of what happened. So I said, no. You owe us 300 grand. I'm not doing it. And I had to make a call. And I folded up the project and told him to fuck off. And I was clearly in the wrong because I had production obligations. I was afraid he was going to sue me. But I, what can I do? So, and because we need so many more people on the next gig, I kept those people around. I kept them around for how many months, three months, I think. And lost more money. But I, I figured I could just make it up on the next one. Uh, because it was a big gig, people were free. And you take those risks when you're an entrepreneur, right? I fuck, I think I can do it well. It feels right. You know, and that's all it is. They're just guesses, right? You talk to people, you talk to advisors, you talk to your finance, you talk to your sales, and you just get a general feel and you trust your gut. And sometimes it's dead wrong, and sometimes it's dead right. It's a whole guessing thing. Business plans should be not like plans, it should be business guesses, because that's all they are. Projections and stuff, they don't work. It's guesses. Um, so anyways, we started Free Delivery, or just about to start Free Delivery, and we get a call from the owner. <sighs> right, you know, like, and this is all happening within like, about like, two, three months of each other, right? So he says, yeah, we had a distributor pulled out, we lost $1.6 million dollars in financing. Are you fucking kidding me? So now we gotta do eight and a half million dollars worth of work for six and a half million dollars, basically. Fuck. So, do you still want the gig, he says. And I say, well, okay, lay off 120 people uh, when I'm winning, like, big things of glass and trophies and all sorts of thing, and everybody thinks I'm fucking easy knees. Lay off everybody and, and fold it all up. Or, or do it and hope for the best and, and see if we can get out of it. So I took it and see if we can pull out. You still have to lay out about 30 people, but and that's, that's the way it goes. Um, anyways, in that like three month span, uh, my wife gave birth to our, our boy, Gab. My dad had kidney, heart, and liver failure. Um, we lost Super Strikers and we lost $1.6 million in financing all within three months. Needless to say, I was a fucking basket case. And I, I just couldn't do it. I was like, you can only take so much pressure. And you know, when it comes to be critical thinking and stuff like that, when it comes right down to it, I'm not that guy. I am an animator. Really, that's what I'm trained for. I learned business as I went. Right? I learned about margins and it, uh, stuff as I went. I didn't know that stuff. I know it now because I had to save that company, or at least try. So in 2007, we started the fucking thing stumbled all the way through it, and then uh, Robbie took over production in uh, early 2008, right, and got it on track, started fucking working. And we finished that show in 2009, May 2009, uh, uh, I think we were about 250 grand over budget, right, roughly, roughly, and we were expected to be a half million over budget, Robbie brought it back on track and, uh, and saved us a little bit of shame. And uh, as soon as we finished like the pilot for Teletoon, and Tom Dick is probably in here or in the other room, as soon as we finished that pilot for Dom, and as soon as we finished the show for YTV, the three delivery, we said, okay, well, that's it. And we're done. And we closed up because we owed $2.2 million to various government agencies, and we just, there's no way, it would have took us eight years to pay that off. Eight years of just, of like $6 million years. We had to continue this business at the same size and try to get this work, work of six million dollars a year to pay off that debt. And it was just not gonna work. I was and, not and, and this is also in form of the timing here where you're looking at having to support uh, an inflated uh, revenue. Mm -hmm. We were coming into what turned out to be the greatest downturn in our industry in 10 yeah. years. Yeah. So, uh, and this is, I just wanna jump in here for a second. Yeah, go ahead. Inform <coughs> Gene's decision making in this situation. This is his baby. And closing up a shop is not easy. Um, I've been through this cycle as well a little bit over the years. And uh, never for my own shop, but I've been through it with some other ones, and, and, and vanishing up. Uh, 
uh, it's never easy. This is something you think everything can do. I, I was with Gene through some of this. Mm -hmm. And this was not easy. You even laying me off. Yes. Yeah. It sucks. It, just, it sucks. It sucks. And I was working from Ottawa. He could do that over the phone. <laughs> um, but the writing hey, Mike, was... Hey, Mike, how you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a good day, Mike. I can feel it. Um, no, but, but the writing is on the walls in these situations. Um, there was no work coming. No, the phone stopped ringing in like fall 2007. Tracy was on, she was in sales, and we just couldn't get the word. The margins kept on dropping on the gigs. Like, we got, hey, I'm gonna phone for the money. money. No, no, exactly. We started getting calls from New York producers saying, hey, I got four grand for a gig. Yeah. Four yeah. grand, we're an eight million dollar a year company. Yeah. We need eight million dollars in sales, we don't need four grand. So, uh, what do you do? You start fucking ramping down. Close enough, unless there's something comes in to save it. And we thought in the fall of 2008, uh, there's a, a German producer came to us and said, "Listen, this is going really well. Uh, this project of ours, we need you guys to do a little demo show, to show the broadcasters that we can actually pull this gig off, and then you'll get it." And it was a 3.1 or 3.2 million dollar contract, and we put all our eggs in that basket. Four minutes. Four minutes? Four minutes? Okay. I still haven't gotten to Luru. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fucking stories here. These businesses. Anyways, so um, we, we did the test. It was 100 grand worth of work. Everybody put their, their blood, sweat, and tears into it. And, uh, and they, they ripped us off. We gave it to them, and they disappeared. No emails, no phone calls, no return, anything. You know? And then we came home. We put all our eggs into the show, and it, it, nothing came of it. So beware. There are still people out there that will get you to do a shitload of work and then not pay you or promise the world to not do anything for you. Um, and so, um, getting into Luger real quick, we, uh, before FAC had even fell, I, you know the writing's on the wall, you know you're going to go bankrupt, probably a lot sooner than when it happens. I knew about, as soon as I took the gig, through, as soon as I took free delivery, because I had to sign a personal guarantee for two and a half million bucks, that means I'm personally obliged to pay it back if the company doesn't. So as soon as I signed that, I was like, there's no way to get out of this kind of thing. I'm dead. So I took it on the chin and employed people and got it done. And then um, in early 2009, I started another company. Actually, I did, my wife did, to protect it. And uh, we ran all the new business through that. And then in May, when the fact it closed, I had a group. And thankfully, I had from January to May to uh, basically tell all the clients that I was working with that, hey, the fact that's going down. Uh, we're going to finish all the gigs that we were doing for you. And, uh, and we did. <coughs> And that's why I still get the business. That's why we're still in business right now. Like, well, we didn't, we didn't, you know, uh, come through with our financial obligations to like uh, a co and stuff like that. But that is the risk of business. People know that, especially those agencies, because they have failures all the time. And they realize that failure is not a person. And this is the biggest thing in fucking Canada. I just can't stand it. Failure is not a person. It is an event that happens to a person. Right now, I'm still a successful entrepreneur, man. I can get 300K last year, sitting on my butt, and made about 70K in profit. And that's been working at home for the most part. Right? And that's just business. You can ride it. If you have personal integrity and you do what you say you're going to do, you know, with my clients, fortunately, I was able to do that. Um, and this year's looking even better. Right? We, our model has changed. We don't hire full time. Not yet. Everybody's on contract or term. So we don't pay retainers. We don't have to pay salaries when there's no work. That saves us money. If we did that with FACA, I'd be a million. Less than work. Um, we keep a very low overhead, right? We pay a thousand bucks a month for rent. A thousand, that's it. Right? Our studio cost over at Fat Cat, the big studio, uh, twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a month. I mean, that's just hurt, right? Our burn rate at Fat Cat for salaries and costs and everything, two hundred and seventy thousand dollars a month. When we're at our peak, we go through about eleven thousand every year. Like it's not much. So keep really low overhead and you know, learn through mistakes. And uh, now we're getting into games, which is really cool. We just finished a couple games for Klondike. Uh, we did a couple games for Popsicle, supplying all the art and animation for those. Um, we uh, just finished Garth and Bennett. Well, hopefully Pat is supervising on that, and uh, we hopefully it should be working great. I know. <laughs> that we got an email. We got an email. Yeah. <laughs> So Pat is the animation director at Garth and Bev, we had about 35, 30, 35 freelancers on that for a little while. So we're, we're still doing a lot of work. It's just nobody's full-time. We're not hiring 
for sale. We hire when the work comes in. We don't hire just for the sake of hiring. I know, I'll get wrapped up. Yeah. Anyways, doing lots of stuff. We're doing games, we're doing cartoons still. It's still a lot of fun. We're still you know, pretty popular because we're funny guys and we like to do lots of fun stuff. Um, and we are looking for cool talent. We want to know who you guys are, so hit us up. Uh, this summer, we're developing a few more games. Uh, hopefully one with a company called H Games. Uh, big one, big MMO. And uh, what else is going on? I don't know. We'll see, we'll see if we'll find out. So and that's if, it. Yeah, if uh, you're ever looking for work, this guy will never die, and what he does will never die, so.